Hello and welcome back to Kids Coding Playground. Today we'll be finishing up the third part for the Apple Dash game. I think we'll have another part or so, maybe two more parts for this game. Today we'll be working on the shop button and other stuff. And so yeah, so I'm, we're going to review from last time we did this game. So this is the code for the player for the last time. And this is the bomb. That's the bomb. This is the HP. Move this here. And we have the basket. Fruit. So this is the fruit. And feel free to pause the video to put anything you missed from the last video. So, and then this is the begin button. Coin. The coin. Yeah, so that's the coin and hitbox, okay? All right, so today we're gonna be working on the shop. All right, so I got my shop button from my um, backpack from here. So I got the shop button, it's really simple. So all I do is just draw a circle and put the money symbol in it. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do for the uh, money button. So in the money button, we're gonna start with a uh, one green flag clicked. Zoom out one more. Okay, so when green flag clicked, we want to hide the button. So in the beginning, let's hide that. Uh, and after that, uh, when I receive end game, so when I receive end game, so we're going to go to the front layer. So once they lose, we want to show the shop button to let them have the opportunity to go to the shop. So when I receive end game. We're gonna go to the front layer, and I'm gonna show. Yeah, I think this should be a good place for the button to stay. So I'm gonna get this X one fifteen Y negative one one one, and then I'm gonna show. And I'm gonna make it so when you hover your mouse over it, it'll make it bigger and smaller. So in the beginning, we're gonna set the size to one hundred percent. All right. And after that, we're gonna get a forever loop. So forever, uh, forever. We're gonna change the size. As you can see, change the size. We're gonna change the size by 100 minus the size, which is 500 with this thing, divided by five. So 500 divided by five is 100. So 100 minus 100 is zero. So in the beginning, we're just gonna change it by that. So we're gonna get the subtract and division so put the subtract uh like put the division into the second one and do that and after that we're gonna put 100 in the first one we're gonna subtract the size this block size so you can show it it's gonna show the size of the shop button and we're gonna divide it by five and then after that if touching mouse pointer so we're gonna make it get bigger when it touches the mouse pointer, so we're going to get if <laughs> touching mouse pointer, uh, then we're going to change, I'm going to duplicate this, we're going to change the size by 150 instead of 100, All right, and we're going to get another if then statement, if, uh, we're going to touching mouse pointer and uh, mouse down, so if you're clicking on the shop button, so if touching mouse pointer and mouse down to make sure that the player is actually clicking on it so we're gonna get the mouse down as well and then we're gonna set the brightness to negative 10 so make it just add a little effect to it so make it less bright effects brightness effect to negative 10 like that and then we're gonna wait until the mouse is down before continuing into the next step wait until mouse down and then after that, we're going to broadcast a message called shop to let a script know that uh, they're entering the shop. So let's name it shop. And we're going to show the variable money in case it's hidden. Oh, actually, I, hit, I showed it right there. And actually, this should be an if else statement. I forgot to put this in the elf, if else because if, if else, uh, we're going to set the brightness to zero. So if else, like that. So, if it's doing th if you click on it, then it'll happen to this. If you're not clicking on it, then we're gonna set the brightness back to normal, which is zero. Set the 
brightness back to zero. Okay, like that. And right here, when I receive start screen, when oops, when I receive start screen, uh, start screen, then we are going to hide and stop other scripts in the sprite. So we want it to only show when you come up. Uh, okay, stop other scripts in the sprite. Other scripts in the sprite. And when I receive start game, start game, we're going to hide. And when I receive shop, we're going to hide because you're entering the shop and we want to hide it. Okay, so we're basically finished with the coding in the shop, and now let's go back to the begin button. So in the begin button, we have to add something, so I'm going to get a when I receive shop, shop, and we're going to duplicate this, hide and stop other scripts in the sprite. So yeah, that's what we're going to do, and let's try it out. So I'm going to lose on purpose right now. Uh, so in my original game, I duplicated the bomb so more bombs would fall down. As you can see, it shows up and when you hover your mouse, it, it goes over it. And as you can see, when you click on it, nothing happens because we didn't do anything with it yet. So we're going to make a new backdrop called the um, shop backdrop. So, it's just a backdrop I got from the sprite library, but I just, uh, I mean the um, backdrop library, but I made it into a sprite. So we're actually going to choose a new backdrop. I think I, yeah, Jurassic, this is the one I used. Okay, I'm going to use Jurassic. So what we want to do is go to the backdrop, select the entire thing, group it, and copy paste. Control C, paint a new sprite, and Control V. Then this will go into here, and we can delete that. Okay, I'm gonna hide this for now. I'm gonna name it the shop backdrop. Shop backdrop. Shop, okay, shop backdrop, that's what we're gonna name it. So in the shop backdrop, so once you click it, it'll switch to this backdrop because I wanna make it different than the original one. So when I receive shop, in the shop backdrop we're coding here, we're gonna go to zero zero, which is the middle. Zero, 0 and we're going to show it and we're going to make it go to front layer and then go backwards 10 layers go backwards I'm not really sure what this is necessary for but I put this in my original game so let's see what happens with it so this is the code I had so when I receive shop we're going to activate all of this and then in the beginning we're also going to when we go in the shop, I'm gonna hide the variable score. And then we're also gonna hide the variable high score. My cloud variable. And I also wanna hide the variable force field. Which we don't have, I'm pretty sure. But I put it there because um, later when we can buy force fields, we're gonna have to do that, okay? And then I'm gonna get a one green flag clicked. When I when green flag clicked, we're gonna hide the variable money. So we only want to show the money in the shop. Hide the variable money and hide in the beginning. And um, when I receive start game, then we're going to show the variable money and hide. So start game show money and hide so we're gonna hide after this and when I receive end game we're gonna show it as well end game we're going to show the variable money show variable money <laughs> okay so then we have our shop background money uh thing so I'm gonna lose on purpose and show you that it switches the background do this once you get to the shop okay Hopefully I can find another bomb. One more bomb. Right, so now the shop appears. Click on it, it switches the shop backdrop and shows you the money. Of how much money you have left, as you can see. So the reason we hide the money in the beginning is to hide it in here. 
So the begin the a starting screen looks a bit more fresh. <laughs> and then when you start it, this will happen. Uh, begin. Then there it'll show. So yes, that's what we want. We also want an exit button, okay? So exit button. So when you get to the shop, we probably want an exit button so you can go back to the game, the home page. So in the exit button, I am going to get it from my backpack. Okay, so I just got my exit button from my backdrop. So for this one, I just got an image from online, like this exit thing, and inserted it into a circle with color to make it look better. Um, you guys can make this yourself, it's pretty simple, or you can even just draw an arrow with a circle or something like that. But I just got this image PNG from online and drew a circle around it. It's really simple. Um, so this is the exit button. Let's go to the code for the exit button. Let's get a one green flag clicked in the beginning and hide. So we'll hide the exit button. And when I receive start game, we want to hide this as well. And then when I receive shop, so when you're in the shop, then we want this to go to the front layer. Oh, where is it? That looks like a perfect spot for the thing as well. Probably because I got from the backpack, it automatically positions it for me. So this is the spot I had it originally. So I'm just going to make it go to this position. It looks like a good spot to me. And I'm going to show. Set the size to 100% because I'm going to make it big and small. So remember this code right here? from this thing drag and drop this right here yeah that okay you might have to change some code okay so this can be kept as normal this can be kept except we can have to take out this shop thing and then in this script in the if statement right here we're going to set the hit bomb to no so you can't get hit by bombs to uh, make sure that the player is not getting hit by a bomb inside the shop. So I'm going to set it to no, and I'm going to show the variable money. Pretty sure we showed it in the other one, but I'm going to do it again, just in case. And I'm going to start broadcast start game, because you're going back. So when they click on you, you want it to go back to the home page. So that's what this thing does. Alright. So yes, this is the code. Pretty simple. Okay, so we have finished our exit sprite. So now, let's try it out. Something got messed up and this thing got really big. Because I have to set this to 100. Okay, so I found w the mistake I did on the button. To that made it really big, as you can see. So what you have to do is actually in the shop, I did it like this. But in the button, it has to be like this. So... As you can see, it has to be like, hold up, okay, yeah, so, let's go back to exit, so, you want it to make it, this subtract, here, you want to make this into the first section of the divide, as you can see, there's a difference, this one is subtracting this divided by this, but this is the opposite, this is subtracting and then dividing, like that, so we're going to do that, so we want to reverse it. Put this into the first, and then you got that. So now I can show you. Let me hide the size. So we got, let me just quickly lose. Okay, we'll move on. Okay. Shop. As you can see, it goes to the backdrop, and as you can see, the button works now. Click it, you go back to the beginning right here. So yeah, that's what we want. So it's little things like this that can actually make a difference inside the game. So yeah, that's basically today's tutorial in Apple Dash Part 3. So today we worked in the shop backdrop, the actual shop button, and the exit button. So yes, that's what we have for today. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye!